Hey everyone, so this is a really different video from what you're probably used to here on my channel where I normally talk, I have quite structured videos talking about investments and different investing topics. But today uh, I've just come back from just a really great experience meeting Daniel and Johan at a company called Technion. I'm in Stockholm, Sweden at the moment. And I just got so much value out of meeting these guys in person. And I, I now really do understand what they're trying to build at Technion. And essentially they're a, a serial acquirer in the industrial space in Sweden. And it's just a fantastic, um, it's a fantastic business, but run by just fantastic people. And by meeting Daniel and Johan, who this is what this video is about, is going to be, uh, I'm going to share the interview that I had with them. I was able to record it and you'll get a feel for it yourselves. And Anyway, let this video is about how, like a little bit about um, my journey over here to Stockholm, Sweden, and the insights that I got by meeting these guys in in, in person. I hope it comes through in the video, but uh, I'm really appreciative of their time. Daniel and Johan are great people. I was with my friend Justin. I'm really appreciative of his time as well. It really helped having a friend to talk about the business with and come up with good questions and things like that. So. The whole journey has just been an amazing learning experience. I hope you get something out of this video. I know it's a bit different, but yeah. Anyway, here you go. Enjoy. Um, you, you, you go ahead. Take whoever wants to take this first. That's fine. Um, who are your role models? You, you, you answer. Yeah, I think that's the that's the house guards. <laughs> okay, yeah, you can't the move the camera. <laughs> it's a picture of two old guys that are maybe two hundred years old together. I'll, uh, I'll put it on the screen. <laughs> cool, Johan. Uh, I I don't really know what to say there. I I uh, I don't have any any role models in, in the financial world or in the business world like that. I just I just take inspiration from everyone that has built a company. I'm very ins I get a lot of inspiration from all the people that we meet, entrepreneurs that we talk to. Uh, for me, those are the people that, that drives the society forward. I mean, of course, it's good with big corporate companies and stuff like that, but it's just, um, for me, it's the, it's the small entrepreneurs that come up with new ideas and solve problems every day. That gives me a lot of inspiration. Very good. Uh, what are your favorite books that helped you with the business strategy? Or even how did you get to the business strategy that you currently have? Uh, we got a lot of inspiration from other uh, conglomerates in Sweden that were listed that we looked at, such as uh, AdTech, Indertrade, Lifco. But uh, I, the, when it comes to what inspires people and, and makes people do their best, I think I got a lot of theoretical know-how from, or, or I don't know, evidence, whatever, uh, from uh, a book called Drive by, I think his name is Daniel Pink, maybe. It it's just tells you that you cannot pay more to get a better result. That It's something else. And that that is something. We, we, we value culture and we value a work environment where you want to be your best. And... Uh, that's that's really inspirational and that that most people work like that yeah, yeah I, I mean I, I cannot take any credit for you know our business model i just found technion and thought it was a good business model <laughs> and jumped on and s surfing the wave but i think i mean you won and i read but we read different books and i think 
regarding that, at least me, I, I don't have very high ambitions, but for every book I read, I try to at least find one thing that would be fun to try. Uh, and sometimes we try things, sometimes they work, it's 50-50, but 50-50 is good. You know, if it works, use it again, it doesn't work, don't do it again. And over time that maybe accumulates a little bit of goodness. Yeah. What are each of your personal goals with the business? Oh, tough, tough to answer. I, I so many answers. I think, but I, uh, it's, it's we have we try to have fun, and most of the days we have a lot of fun, which means that I want to be doing this for as long as possible. I wanted, I wanted to keep it like this and just do good things and try to improve and, and constantly learn. I mean, we learn from each other, we learn from others, and and we try to keep every day as as uh, we go to school. And uh, every day you go to school, you, you learn something new and that's fun. So I, I don't really know what to achieve other than to just improve this build. Actually. Yeah, it's a really tough question. I mean, as an investor, I would like someone that answers a question to say, you know, I want to build this business for you because it's going to be so valuable, etc. But I don't think that's the very honest answer for me this is fun i learn things i have fun hanging out with you one with maria and the rest of the gang that is not here today uh, but and part of that is building something that is valuable that is proud to be part of it's fun to go and meet friends go to parties and say you know i'm part of this we're building something and people are think that it's quite cool uh, you know it's it's the egoistic drive and Hopefully, you know, that egoistic drive of be learning things, doing challenging things and becoming better and building something aligns with what the shareholders want over the long term. Uh, but it's it's not, maybe this sounds strange to say, but it's not maybe for the shareholders that I do this. I do this because I think it's fun and then it's good for shareholders, yeah. hopefully. I mean, that's if I think that's how we are measured, of course, and, and how we... Prom promote ourselves <laughs> if, if, if we're good at what we're doing which we want to be we want to be our best then you're gonna probably everyone in this would would benefit from us being good and having fun i guess so why this type of business right mm -hmm. instead of any other type of business oh, it's i mean a lot of coincidence of course uh i started this company together with a friend uh, jonas Hegqvist in 2006 and that was because we wanted to do to do our own business. It, it was not important what we uh, wanted to do. It's just that we wanted to do something that were, was our own. And uh, the the cards were played and we had the opportunity to start this and we had a lot of inspiration from from uh, from AdTech and from Lagerkrans group and from Indutrade and, and we saw that it we were we were young and naive and we thought it was easy so we started. <laughs> Fair enough. That's, yeah. fine. That's fine. Yeah. Uh, I think for me, uh, it's really the people. I, I I don't care about the business industry or uh, whatever you call that. Uh, it's rather that it's fun to be with that kind of people and the culture you can share. But also, like, this is, I think, the only business model where there is actually no upper limit because you could be in every single niche you can buy all the company i mean the theoretical upper limit is the world gdp uh, but other than that you know there's no theoretical limit if you're selling raisins i mean that's how many raisins can you eat that's yeah. that's a top absolutely yep that's a good point uh investors yeah like the serial acquirers for that type of reason i guess too so um now speaking of scaling and getting to something like that size uh, what do you think the challenges are to scale this business? Oh, it's a lot of a lot of challenges all the time. Uh, it's it's very important to keep uh, the people running our subsidiaries uh, inspired, and and what we strive to do is to to have a feeling or, or promote a feeling that they should they should feel that it's it's their own business they should run it as it is as it were their own and um, of course if we become if we start to 
tell them what to do instead of just supporting them, uh, then I think we will have trouble. And uh, it's very easy to do that actually because you see some opportunities or you see some flaws that you could fix easily because you have the experience and the helicopter view of everything. Uh, then you you have to make them realize that they find the, the flaws themselves and fix fix it in their way. So when it comes to scaling, we do it in a in a steady pace, uh, but also uh, in a pace that that makes sure that we can have everyone come along and uh, not move away too fast. I think. Yeah. I mean, we talk a lot about culture, so I'm not going to talk about that now. But uh, I think tangential to that is also our reputation. Uh, right now, we're still very small. Few people know about us, but of course, with scale and with time, more and more people will know about us. And I think maybe the biggest reason that Berkshire Hathaway has done so well is that they have an excellent uh, reputation. Anyone almost uh, likes them and would love to sell their business to them and that is a moat that you cannot you cannot fabricate that uh, over a short time and of course I mean building such a solid reputation is super difficult but destroying that is very quick I mean, it we, goes so fast it's yeah. so fast we promise not only entrepreneurs we promise our employees our colleagues different things uh, in words or in action and I mean one or two wrong steps in the wrong direction, then everything is ruined. Oh, that's, I'm going to jump to a question that I was saving for the end, <laughs> but I'm going to jump to now because I think it leads in nicely. So this is actually, I, I talked to an American friend of mine who he, he's working for a, like a gas utility company that had just been acquired, yeah. right? And this is like literally his words. I'll read it out to you and then tell me what you think of that at, at the end, all right? So he said, my company is the largest gas utilities contractor in the Northeast. It was started by three brothers 40 years ago and it's founder led. It was just acquired by this company, Artura, uh, which is an investment firm focusing on buying utility businesses. They look for founder led high quality businesses in the industrial space to purchase and then optimize margins. My friend said, uh, I noticed when Technion mentions in the annual reports, things like they're keeping good connections with their existing customers, assisting our companies with our framework to help them better optimize their margins. We are largely hands off, but assist when needed, etc. And this is almost exactly what was told to me when our company was purchased. Anyway, fast forward a year from now, and we have worse health insurance, bonuses have been cut, and production is far more stressed than ever even though the head office would tell you 100% otherwise. So the moral of the story is that the, uh, what happens to, what about the employees of the companies they acquire, technical acquires? I'm just skeptical when hearing that nothing operational changes when they acquire a business like they say. And sure, from a numbers point of view, it probably looks like a great investment, but from a personal stance from someone who works at a place that was just recently acquired by almost a, by at least a similar type of business, I'm just skeptical of fully trusting the rosy picture they paint. <laughs> I'd be willing to bet that by and large, employees are far less happy after their business has been acquired. I'll take the bet. <laughs> regardless of what management says. So I guess the question is something like, is there an inherent misalignment of incentives between the businesses that you acquire and the head, head office? Sorry for that being very, I know that's no, uh, no, it's, a, it's a good. long question, but... And so it's important. I think it's, it's impossible for me to answer that shortly. I think that <clears throat> we try to keep things that they are because we buy companies that we like. So we don't want to change anything. We want to help them, of course. And that's what this person is telling you. That's that's how you sell it. And then you do something else. Mm. Uh, optimize margins. It sounds like something you do for now. We try to have companies forever. So we don't, in that case, we optimize it at every given moment in that case, but which is impossible. So we try to have healthy margins and we have, and, and how we do that is more or less to tell the people that, that work at that company that your time is worth so much. You're so good at what you'd be doing. So you should have a healthy margin on what you're selling. 
so we can have wiggle room if something bad will happen because something bad will always happen and then we have some wiggle room we don't want to have really narrow margins because then we will be squeezed so we that is something that we always think about but when it, when it comes to uh, culture and and whatever things happening within one of the subsidiaries it's up to that ceo of that subsidiary to make sure that it's a healthy work environment in there that's our most important key factor to be successful so from this headquarters we monitor every company we get all the financial figures every month of course and we keep with some of them if they want to talk to us every day it's fine if they want to talk to us every week that's more than fine if they if they don't talk to us in a month we call them and ask are you are you still there and they say yeah yeah i have a lot to do we just it's everything is fine so we we try to be supportive of them and coach them yeah, talking about the ceos now and um, some people they do everything by themselves some people want constant interaction with ourselves and that's fine uh, but what we monitor is that they take care of their coworkers that is that is key if if people stay and and try to be their best we're so confident that we will tackle any obstacle that that will be in front of us if sales goes down fine we fix that it's easy we just increase action on sales whatever if if we have poor suppliers we find new ones but if the culture is cracking or or it goes down then we have to go there and be very close to that ceo and coach that person really closely and make that person change because if they don't take care of their team we will at one point be uh, it it won't be possible to to rescue that situation between the coworkers and the ceo and what we do there is we replace the ceo to someone that understand how it is to build a team uh, we know that our biggest asset is all the relationships and knowledge that our coworkers holds with suppliers with customers with each other that's our asset we can always change the product we can never we can never it, we can change the relationships we can fix it but that's we don't have that amount of time we will be uh, in the grave before we've done that so so we the most important asset we have is our employees and and we have to value that if we can't live that if it's just words as this the, the guy that you the, that you read from uh, the the quote from uh, if if we couldn't if we couldn't live what we we're, we're saying or telling then we wouldn't exist i believe no Is there any measurement of employee satisfaction or churn rates or anything like that? I know some businesses do things like anonymous surveys amongst uh, their employees and they try to then each year look at that anonymous survey to see whether it's improving or declining or things like that. Do you, Is there anything like that that you guys look at? or We have tried it. Uh, it was a few years since we tried it. You haven't? No. Haven't. Okay. Well, we, we've done it a, a, a few times. But it's difficult since since the subsidiaries are pretty small within themselves. It's it can be difficult to be anonymous, you know. Uh, yes, I understand. Yeah. Uh, and since they are really should be working within themselves. I mean, they should the the interaction between. They, it's hard for the employees within the subsidiary. We're not so interested in what they think about us. I mean, how we work, because we should only be supportive and we know if we are or if we're not, more or less. So if they're happy with their situation, their uh, work environment in their subsidiary, it's hard to get a good answer since the subsidiary is so small and people tend not to be really open if it's if they think that someone can figure out who gave that answer. Yeah. I don't know if there is a good answer. I was just... It's just an interesting. Yeah, I know, and and we, and we and we I think yeah. we discussed it each at least once a year. We discuss how can we do this in a yeah. good way because we want the information, of course. Uh, but my my thought about that is the best thing is to be out with our coworkers as often as possible. You yeah. people, you will you will get things there. Yeah. People will start talking to you. Okay. And you will see things. Like and at also, the, like I at think, the bar drinking and like exactly. absolutely right. yeah, have a party, and you will f- you will you will know everything. I mean, we try to f- employ people that think 
like us in the regard that it's very important with the human relationships. And I mean, the way we talk and act, hopefully that also spills over to what people think is important so that they follow up on that. And also like formally, we have this monthly report that is maybe two pages long, very simple, takes 15 minutes or so to fill in for the daughter company CEOs. And one of the questions there is, have you done anything this month to increase the satisfaction or happiness of the employees? That is the key question on the same level as have you paid your taxes? So hopefully, I mean, that's not a measurement, but it is, um, uh, uh, what is it called? A uh, reminder. A reminder, thank you, that it is important and that it's that a little value, bit embarrassing to, to fill it in blank three times in a row. <laughs> yeah, and also it, maybe it sounded when I spoke about this that it's, that it's that CEO's fault. I mean, it's our fault because we employed that person, yeah. right? We put that person in that position. Maybe that person is not fit to do that type of work. So we have to coach them, or if that's not possible, find someone that, that is right for the work. I mean, yeah. but, but also just circling back to your question there from your friend, uh, the, the reputation that we have is so important. So I mean, it of course makes me sad that someone promises that and then things changes. We really value, and given that we have an eternal time frame on this, uh, it's so important that we keep that and defend that fiercely uh, so when we talk with entrepreneurs and tell them exactly what that person uh, had told them uh, we'll sometimes also get the question like but how do i know that you're different from other people and for us i mean of course we only have our word but we also have other people's words so we always tell them that you know feel free to call any of our daughter company ceos feel free to call any of the sellers and uh, they will tell you uh, whatever is on their mind and I mean that is something that hopefully over time builds up um, that reputation yeah yep great that that was a that's a difficult question to to articulate but I'm glad we got to got, got there in the end sorry just one more thing <laughs> no no please don't, I, don't like I keep talking about yeah. this all the time Do it. Uh, but regarding like optimizing margins and such uh, of course we are super interested in being profitable and having a lot of cash flows but maybe also because that we are so long-term focused and do we don't have like a financial target on a quarterly or annual basis or even two-year three-year basis we try to make the best over time and that is being sustainable. So we don't try to squeeze out the last dollar or percentage in every deal. We want to make sure that our customers are making money, that our suppliers are making money because then over time we can all make a bigger cake and share that in a better way. We know that if we would want to max out and make the best numbers possible for 2023, we would have done differently, but that's not how we that's not how we roll, as, <laughs> as people say, young people. <laughs> okay. Uh, oh, I'll just ask this. Do you, do you guys invest your personal money? And if so, where do you like to invest it? Uh, I, I don't have so much money free floating around. It's all in taking your shares, but the money that I that I get is, is mainly put into family activities such as travel, uh, such as uh, just uh, building a little bit on my summer cabin and uh, stuff like that. So not not much of, of stock investment for me. <laughs> I actually put in my gross income straight through uh, to techno shares. <laughs> so after paying taxes, I actually, it's, an, it's a net minus for me <laughs> on the cash flow basis. <laughs> Okay, well, that's uh, some incentive to uh, keep going. <laughs> cool. Um, okay, here's one. Well, since you both have stock in the business, if someone came in and offered you a billion dollars for the business today, would you take it? That's, what, five times the current market cap. Is that about right? It would be fun to take it and yeah. buy it back at 20%. Exactly. <laughs> just take it. Okay, try to see it drop. <laughs> and then just buy it back. That would be perfect. That would yeah. do that. No, I... I I have nothing else to do. I, I, I have a lot of things to do. I, I, I rather do nothing else but, but this. I, I really enjoy my life. I like being here. I like working with Daniel and, and my colleagues here. I don't know what to trade it for. Yeah. Um, actually. What about if it was like a 
instead of billion. Make it 50 billion. 50 billion. Maybe I, I, would, I would consider it. And, and, sure. but, but I would have to sit down for a couple of days and see what I could do with that kind of money. I w- uh, but um, that would be, that, then I would have to figure out a plan that would be totally different of what I've been done so far, been doing so far. And uh, no, I, I... I I'm <laughs> what, to, what would I'm, you I'm, do? I'm trying not to encourage you to just go take the money and then go start another, exactly like Technium uh-huh. 2.0 over here. Oh, um, no, I wouldn't. Ne- Assume you can't do that. No, no, no. Because that's I'm, the easy option. Yeah. And I, I wouldn't do that. Oh, no. Wouldn't? I mean, this is my Technium. No, I mean, starting up uh, a similar thing, I mean, it, it's so much it's so much work, like building up all that reputation. And also you kind of cannot do that because you have in all forums committed yourself and we as well do that. This is our thing. And we promise everyone that we'll take care of this for as long as uh, forever. Uh, and then like, yeah, but only for $5 billion. Uh, then you do something else that's... I don't think that How works. much defense material can you get for Ukraine for fifty billion? Maybe that. Oh yeah. yeah Something like that. Yeah, that's a good use of the money. Yeah. 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 I would might do that. I would to, do that. Might be able to end the war. That'd be exactly. Cool. If it's possible to end the war, I would do that. Yeah, right. Then I take the money, I do it. Well, that's a good answer. <laughs> My friends will like that. All right. Um, okay, let's imagine it's ten years time. And the business doesn't exist anymore. What do you think could have gone wrong? If someone came with $50 billion, <laughs> then that would happen. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> uh, if, we, if we reach a level where, we're not, where we lose the culture and we're not able to scale it, uh, but I don't see that happening because this has come down to pace, and I think we have a healthy pace. We learn along the way, and we iterate towards something that is scalable. Uh, but if, 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 maybe we wouldn't see it. Um, I don't know. No, it's really difficult. I mean, th- there are maybe realistic scenarios, very, very low probability where the where we go, we'll go into a stale, uh, but like being eliminated, that is quite difficult to see. I mean, of course, we could have taken on, you know, excess debt and risk, etc. But we we don't do that, so. No, we've done it once in before 2008, and yeah. it was not a good thing to experience. <laughs> we don't have to do it again. No, it, my answer was stupid. It, it will not happen. We would slow down, learn from it, and then speed up again. We, we will still exist. Uh, I mean, I have to answer something according to the war again. I mean, if, if no one stops that crazy person over in the East, sure, maybe same. something like that. Yeah. But otherwise, uh, I mean, we... We stand on many, many legs. So if we break a few, it doesn't matter. We have many more to stand on. Now in 10 years time, the business is worth $5 billion. So what's that, 50X from? Uh, that right? 25 maybe. Let's say 20, yeah, I'm sorry, my math is out. Uh, let's say it's worth $5 billion. What do you think are the important things that happened along the way to now be at this valuation? Do you want me to answer? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I'll write down the right answer. <laughs> no, no. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that you're going to save me here. Uh, no, but I mean, I think I think I answered it a little bit already. That that we do it in our pace and learn along the way. Uh, I'm not. It it seems like a big number, but it's we're striving towards that, and it's it's our. Uh, we have our mind set on a on a very long, long horizon. <laughs> it's very far far ahead. So we do all we can to be as good as possible. And I think this is a st- we have found a sustainable way way of doing business. So I, I mean, it's just continue what we're doing and and constantly be eager to learn more. And hopefully by doing that, we will attract more people that would like to join us because I think we need more people that have the same vision, have the same strive and uh, would like to be a part of this, of course. And I think we will do that. I mean, yes, I mean, mean, what is really enticing, I think, but maybe also the part that makes it extremely boring is that 
we won't grow by inventing something new. There won't be, you know, a slam dunk success in a new product or app or whatever. We'll just continue to do this. So instead of being 20 companies, we'll be, you know, 25x that amount maybe. And we won't, it will be approximately the same size of companies. Maybe it will be new countries. That's probably something. Yeah. But uh, maybe. Yeah, it, it will probably be similar companies as well. But of course, when we bring in more people here to uh, the mother company, the circle of competence also changes. Uh, and that might tilt it a little bit, but more of the same. 25 times more of the same. Yeah. <laughs> what are your, I guess, the most common metrics you use to for success to know that the business is on track? Do you have one or two that you sort of really look at? Yeah, well, historically, and I still do that, I look for sales. Uh, I don't know the English word, but order intake, how much orders we get, mm-hmm. how much we sell, and the margin, those three. That's yep. just, I get, then I have a very good gut feeling if I have the control of those three. much of your free cash flow each year on average I know it's slumpy because acquisitions come but how much of it are you trying to spend on acquisitions I don't think that we think in that way uh, or actually I should say that maybe we we don't I, I should be <laughs> the one that should think about that <laughs> uh, we we buy companies at the pace that we feel comfortable from uh, a working environment from a cultural perspective from what we can finance and what we can find, of course. Uh, and that sets the pace rather than uh, how much we bring in. Uh, yeah. At the stage, sooner or later, we'll probably get into a situation where uh, the free cash flow that comes in maybe uh, w- will be so big, so that will be bigger than the rest. But like right now, that is not a factor. We, we, don't, we don't have that as a steering. Uh, but rather, of course, we have different covenant with the banks that we have to uh, keep in mind. Yeah, and also I think actually if, if, if we do our jobs correctly and well, we're going to reach a point where we have uh, bought more companies than our free cash flow can support and we have to do something about that. And then we do that and just we take the next step on the ladder, so to speak, as we did in, in 2019 when we went to the, to the market. So uh, when we were listed, I should say. So I think we we've been we've been hold we've been acquiring companies as a pace that our free cash flow could support from the beginning because we started without any external money, and that has been an extremely good school for us to learn and and to make mistake at a slow pace so we could correct them and learn from them, and and then when we have had enough cash from from. Uh, from our businesses, we have had enough money to go to the bank, make a loan there and go and buy a new business and then start over. And that's a very slow pace. And finally, when, when we reached the level where we could uh, uh, list the company, we took in some money there, we can we can increase the speed of what we were acquiring companies. We found that speed now and, and we're becoming better at that speed and hopefully we, we, will, we will even be better, which means that we would need External yeah, exactly. money one more time at least before exactly. we. Would you go to the markets to raise that money? Do you I think, think so. Yeah. yeah. Is there a is there a listing above yeah. where you currently yeah. are? So that would be like a natural step for us to come to the main market in Sweden. Yeah. Uh, a little bit more regulation, but also, that's, I mean, that's good, because it uh, forces us to just step up a bit. And I think that will be natural for us when we when we reach that level. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Plus, you'll need to hire more people because you'll be doing more deals and have more businesses and. Maybe a little bit, not so. Much. We can handle so much more here. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, but that's true. I mean, we are we are six now. Yeah. And we we just luckily enough we hired uh, the seventh one. She will be starting within six months here. So, I feel that we have a lot of uh, we, we have uh, what's the word we, we uh, have a lot of capacity we have a lot of capacity to do so much more than w- what we're doing at the moment I mean from we were two persons for eight years or something like that no more 
uh, 11 yeah. years yeah so i mean we we help each other we support each other we can do so much more that we're doing currently are doing uh so yeah and sooner or later you're right we have to employ more people but we take it slowly yeah but we want to scale on people so we have for example a quarterly report reporting you know the cost of the mother company divided by total sales just to keep track of that because we of course we only cost money very few of us actually sell something yeah. uh, so that has to go down and over time we get hopefully more and more scale on that in terms of you said uh stepping up to raise you'd raise capital from the market um how much stock dilution is too much uh if we don't reach our, our financial targets to double every five years mm-hmm. uh, eps double every five years yeah yeah but i think regarding the ep um the dilution part i mean what we aim to do is that we create we want to create long-term shareholder value for the long-term shareholders uh, so when we go out on the market we need to ensure that uh, the shareholders that we already have uh, will be better off so i mean the nu- it will be a numbers game of course at that time and uh, some kind of belief on what we can do um, I, it's difficult to answer, you know, if it's ten percent or thirty percent or something in between. But uh, there, I think the dilution part would more come if from how much we believe that we can acquire for the next maybe one year or two. We won't take in more money just sitting idling, uh, and we won't, you know, take in money for just half a year because then we would need money again if we want to accelerate. So I think that would. Uh, be the factor to optimize for and the rest would be the rest of the equation so. what separates you guys from the competition the other requires i don't know <laughs> i we're early in what we're doing uh, at least uh, early when it comes to those that i look at a little bit i don't look so much at others but the ones that i get inspiration from in the beginning uh where we're just it feels like we just started we still have it feels like i know everyone not, not everyone we're 450 people but it feels like i know every company very well uh and uh i think also that we that we uh as as we discussed uh that we try to uh, do do what we say when it comes to culture that we really value the culture that we acquire and we don't want to change that as long as it's a good healthy work environment uh, I, I hope that others do that as well but that's something that we ex- at least try to to keep um, we are very we are very strict on how, how we value our acquisitions how much we pay for them we, we have the same uh, calculation model today that we had when we started. We want our money back in five years. And uh, we have stuck to that and that has been working fine. We find a seller that accepts that because it sounds healthy and it's healthy for both parties. And maybe we attract sellers that value their co-workers and and value their heritage enough. So the premium dollar is not the most important thing. It's that their life's work will get into the hands of someone that will keep it for eternity. That's the type of buyer we want to be, at least. Um, I don't know. I, it's hard to tell how we differ because we want to be ourselves. I, we do it our way. Yeah. I have nothing to add, as Charlie Mungo would say. <laughs> Uh, okay, last question for competition um, is you said ad tech, I think you said um, Lag and Crunch, the competition that you looked at, especially early on days to, to model yeah, how, how yeah. you get going and you saw that as a, do, is there competitors that you still admire today? Do you like what they're doing or do you think they've changed or is there other competitors that you think you really admire now? Mm, not really, no. Uh, because we try 
to look at what we do and we try to find out the best way for us so we don't look so much at what other people do i th- i i've been in retrospect i've seen what what uh, jorgen been doing at at lagerkrans group for a few years because when he when he came into that company the margins were really poor and they were chasing top line and he said we don't have to do that let's make this profitable instead and he did that for several years and and i think that a lot of investors was disappointed in him but not so many people are disappointed in him today i i i admire that you you do your own thing and you do what you believe in and uh, so that's a, that's i think that's a good way to do business uh but we we don't look at i don't feel that we look at others and try to go after someone we do no. we try to do it our way yeah uh, i mean some we read in the newspapers about what they have done or not done uh, but i don't think that we know more about these companies than you know an interested outside investor no definitely not no, no. maybe we come across some information from from uh, brokers and people that i mean third party people that or consultants we hear some rumors but that that's rumors and i mean it's okay for us to not understand what they're doing because we don't want to know <laughs> <laughs> okay last question for you guys uh would this would would technion work in australia i guess <laughs> it's very selfish because i'm australian obviously. <laughs> yeah. I just to see no but i think i mean now we just we, we took a huge leap for us and 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 uh, acquired a company in england just a few weeks ago yeah. that's the first acquisition outside sweden so that's a huge step that's a bus it's made with buses wait, wait. no they it's did in the beginning yeah uh, it's called uh bell coachworks but what they do is they car transport enclosed cars uh, cars car transport vehicles cool. uh very special things fantastic niche yeah. and uh, it looks it looks really interesting and good and it's it's family run perfect culture very good uh no but, but but so i think we think it's fun and it's interesting yeah, and it also will make us more i don't know uh, robust by being in more geographical markets so since it's fun and we also experience the experience now is that the entrepreneur is talking the same language in every country that we've been yeah. i mean they value the same things they the people that we meet they value the same type of culture they value that making a profitable company is the way to do it always always chasing the profitability uh, value their margins value, value their niche uh, so it's it's been really really interesting to start looking outside sweden i think we're going to continue doing that even though that i think that the majority of what we're going to do is still going to be close to our home Yeah. because it's easier and it's so much to do here yeah. but but it's since we want to to spread our wings and we want to expand and we want to do this for eternity then i think we have, sooner or later we will end up in in australia maybe that's one <laughs> of the steps that it will get to the five billion us dollar <laughs> yeah setting down a pole in sydney absolutely <laughs> thanks guys that's it that's uh very appreciative of your time thanks very much uh, oh, thank you yeah, it was fun it. really good questions hard to answer <laughs> do you want them to introduce themselves uh, so you can have it at the beginning of the video? Or you no, I'll anything? introduce them. Yeah. Okay. Uh, sure. Did you have any questions? Um, Are you writing anything down you want me to ask? I did actually ask, uh, I think, one thing, which you can choose to uh, answer uh, politically or not, uh, which is can you individually or jointly think of a decision, that, like a most recent decision, that was wrong? Like a mistake you made, basically. I want to hear about a mistake. Yeah. Oh tend to forget about those <laughs> push them down mistakes uh, the the is what just pops up straight away is that we employed a lot of people that we should never have employed throughout the years you you really want someone for that position so at head office or in this subsidiary? both both yeah, everywhere. both everywhere uh, like looking for subsidiary CEOs we done plenty of errors there throughout the years mm-hmm because you want to hear you, you you hear what you want to hear when you in, interview them you hear about the resume and uh, but you have something in your gut that tells you ah something is off here but you don't listen to that gut feeling you just go for whatever they have in their cv and what they tell you and you go to the references we do the test everything seems okay 
Mm. There's something in your gut that tells you, nah, and you do it anyway. And then you have to live with it for a while until you replace them. So <laughs> is there a way, um, how do you approach not make, making the same mistake again? Uh, and if you could answer in a way that's not just your gut. Oh, of course. Uh, when it comes to, to hiring people, we do. We have several people interviewing them. Mm-hmm. We make all the references, our, take all the references ourselves. We don't let anyone, no third parties doing that. Uh, we send them through tests, both logical and personality tests. So that was that. That is something that has evolved. Mm. And before we hire someone senior or someone in a, in a, in a key position, we always have a I don't know what's it called in English, but a grandfather or grandmother interview. So someone from the head office will do that. And if we hire someone here, we let someone from the board do that interview. So I think also like being even calmer because in those situations usually the mistakes happen because there's a void there's a role that needs yeah. to be filled and someone or many people are working overtime because we need to fill that so you really really want the person to be right uh, but taking that shorter term pain of maybe going through another one two three candidates that may take another few weeks is um, most of the time worth it if you feel that this is not really what we're looking for we're not allowed to answer with the gut feeling thing. yeah <laughs> yeah that was you i, I can do that <laughs> that was good thank you <laughs>